So our objective today is that we're going to learn about the law of conservation of mass. We just took our test over chemical bonding and those elements bonding and attaching to each other. Okay? Now we're going to look at why it does that or when it does that. It basically goes through what we call a chemical reaction. Well, all chemical reactions have to follow this law, the law of conservation of mass. So, to start off, let's just review real quick what a chemical change is, because we already studied that. Okay? So, who can tell me what a chemical change is? Tristan? Uh, it's, it's a change molecular. Molecular? Molecular change. Mm -hmm. Very in the atom. Okay, very good. So basically, the attachments or the molecular attachments, an attachment in the molecule, that's what a molecular attachment is, okay, molecular attachment is the attachment in the molecule, the attachments or the bonds that exist get changed, okay? In a chemical change, you get something completely new. Remember we talked about chemical changes compared to physical changes, right? Mm -hmm. And we talked about some of the signs for a chemical change, and we saw that some of the signs for a chemical change could also be a sign of a physical change. So what's the major difference of a chemical change compared to a physical change? What was the difference between both of those changes? Alex? A chemical change is like, uh, produces the new substance. Very good. What do you think? Okay. Could you say that again? A uh, chemical change is when a uh, substance produces a new substance. Very good. So, Vanessa, what is, it, what is the main difference <coughs> between chemical change and physical change? What is what is a chemical change to do that a physical change to done? Alex, could you repeat your answer? So, um, when a substance uh, produces a new substance. So what? Very good. Forms a new substance. So chemical change is a change that basically forms a new substance. You get something new. If I take this piece of paper and I burn it, what's my new substance? Ash. Ash. Can I ever go back? No. No. Okay. Um, so you need to think about that. In a chemical change, you get a complete new substance and you rarely can go back. Okay. So we know that a chemical change is basically a change in composition. What is composed of, specifically in the molecular level, in the molecule level, in the bonds, okay? Now, it is a result of a chemical reaction. In a chemical reaction, what is occurring at a molecular level, at a level in where you're looking at the atoms? The bonds are breaking, and you see that little star right there? It's there because it's important. You need to know this. The bonds are breaking... And then, they're making a whole new substance. Okay? So, if I come over and I say, hey, Orlando, so here I have a house, a little dollhouse made out of Legos. Pretty sure Orlando's probably not going to want to play with the dollhouse. Because, no, I want a nice, cool racing car. Right? Can he change that dollhouse made out of Legos into a racing car? Yes. What does he have to do? Take it apart first, and then, Vanessa, build something else. Build the cool race car that he wants, right? So, he took it apart, basically took all the pieces apart, right? And then he put it together into something new. Now, did the Legos change in any way? No. But the fact that he put it in a different way changes what it is, right? So, in a chemical change, that's what's happening. The bonds that are there are breaking apart. The atoms don't change. The atoms stay the same. But those atoms are then put together in a different way to make your different substance. Okay? So, our example. Uh, remember we talked about um, when compounds change, you can change the properties completely. We talked about hydrogen gas being flammable, oxygen gas being flammable. They come together. Okay? Those bonds break apart, the two hydrogens break apart, the two oxygens break apart, and then when they come together, they make H2O. Two hydrogens and one oxygen stuck together, and that changes it completely. You go from a flammable substance, something that will catch fire, 
to something that we use to put out fires. Okay? So in a chemical change, that's what's happening. Is you're taking these bonds and you're breaking them and then you're putting them together in a different way and it makes a completely new substance with completely new properties. Okay? Now, we see chemical changes when chemical reactions occur. Well, there has to be a way for us to look at a chemical reaction and see what's actually happening. Because what we learn about a chemical change is that in a chemical reaction, the atoms are rearranging, and whenever they rearrange, they either use or lose energy. Okay? For example, Orlando, whenever he's breaking apart that house, has to use some of his energy to break it apart, right? And then he's going to put it back together into, um, into a cool car. He's putting, he's putting energy into it. So anytime you have chemical reactions, you have some type of energy included. And we write these chemical reactions in what we call chemical equations. And there are several ways to write chemical equations, but the one we're going to look at is the formula form of a chemical equation. And you've seen this before. The formula form of a chemical equation has the symbols of the elements, has chemical formulas, the chemical formula of the compounds that are going in, and it has the amount of going in. And then it also has the amount and types of compounds that are coming out. So a chemical formula or chemical equation is almost like a recipe. If you ever read a recipe, it tells you how much or how many ingredients are going in, right? And it tells you how much of each. It tells you what you're going to do to them. And it tells you how much you're going to get out. Right? If I go and look for a cookie recipe, it tells me how much flour, how much butter, how much sugar, if it's chocolate chips, how many chocolate chips. It tells me all that stuff, right? It gives me directions. You stir it, you mix it, you melt it, whatever you're going to do. Put it in the oven. Then at the end it tells you it makes a dozen cookies. Or it makes three servings. Or it makes eight servings. It tells you how much you're supposed to get out of it, correct? These do the same thing. Here, it tells you that you're putting in one molecule of methane gas, CH4 is methane gas, plus one molecule of oxygen, produces, yields or makes, one molecule of carbon dioxide, and one molecule of water. So this is a recipe. It's telling you what you need to put in and what you're going to get out. What you're going to put in, we don't call those ingredients in science, we call those reactants. They are reacting, so they're reactants. What comes out are your products. It's what you're making. So, if I'm to read that in words, I would say the reactants of methane gas and are reacting with oxygen gas to yield, produce, or make one molecule of carbon dioxide and one molecule of water. So that is the recipe. It's just in chemical formula form. Okay? So you have to know that the things on the left are reactants, the things going in, and the things on the right are the products, the things that are coming out. Yes? These are my of equations. It's an equation. Yeah, basically it's an equation. That's what, it's called a chemical equation, but you do equations in math all the time, right? You have your left side, you have your left, right side, correct? Now, the other thing that can be found in these chemical equations is energy. Some reactions require energy to start. Well, actually, all reactions require energy to start. It's called activation energy. But some reactions take in a lot of energy, and some reactions give off energy. So, some reactions are called exothermic, and some reactions are called endothermic. So, let's look at exothermic. Remember I told you in science there's a bunch of prefixes? Right? If you know them, you can kind of figure out what it is. All right, I'm going to look at this sign right over here. What does it say? What does that tell you? That's where you leave. That's where you leave from, right? You can leave out of that door. You can go out of that door. Exit. What are the first two letters there? A. Yes. 
What is partial uh -huh. energy here? So exothermic means that the energy is leaving. So an exothermic reaction, the energy is leaving. So if it's leaving, then it's a product. Okay? So if you look, here I have a generic compound. I just put AB, but it could be H2O, whatever. Okay? A generic compound. A compound made out of either two elements or two compounds, whatever. When they separate, now I have one by itself and one by itself. But when they separate, they release energy. Because think about it. Something right here is holding those things together. Energy is holding both of those together. So if they separate, energy is let go. So energy in this case will be a product. It's coming out. Okay? Endothermic. Going in. N, in. Okay? Endothermic absorbs energy. Like the energy is going into the reaction. I like enter. Okay? Like enter. Very good. So enter. The yeah, end, right? So here I have loners, just two elements by themselves. And then energy is the glue that puts them together. And now they're together. So here the energy is. Gluing them together. So think of energy as glue. Here I have the glue that's the glue's done together. But when I separate them, that glue is released. Okay? Here, energy is there. Well, if I want to put these together, I have to glue them together. So now the glue is stuck right here. Okay? So in exothermic, the energy is released, and endothermic, the energy is absorbed. So, what we're going to see with these reactions is sometimes temperature rises and sometimes temperature goes down or decreases. So, in one of these, temperature increases and another one, temperature decreases. In one, it gets hot and one, it gets cold. So, before you, you, if you start thinking about this, think about it this way. All right. So, everybody in this room represents energy. We're stuck in this room. Okay? Energy is stuck in this room. When that bell rings, you leave, leave through the exit. So you exit out of here, right? The hallway right now doesn't have an energy. There's somebody there. When that bell rings, all the energy exits. Tell me what the temperature in the hallway is. Did it increase? Did it decrease? Increase. Increase. Aren't we all in the hallway now? Yes. So the temperature increases when you have exothermic reactions because the energy is allowed to go out into the exterior. Okay? Now, let's think about it the other way. Excuse me. Hernandez. Yes. Osorio? Did she come from this class? She better not have. Okay. If you're going home, I certainly hope you didn't come from this class to get, picked, to get you picked up. And it's an excused absence, by the way. You're not supposed to be calling from your phone. You know that. I don't know if it went up here, but you know yourself because you're not supposed to be calling from your phone. And we're calling. All right, make sure you watch the... Uh, the lecture online. Bye, All right. So, have a good weekend. So, exothermic, the temperature rises. It increases because the energy is going out. Now, let's think about it this way. So, in between passing periods, all the students are in the hallway, right? All the students are energy. Before that tardy bell rings, everybody comes in, right? So, when that tardy bell rings, all the students are in the room, stuck in here. No one's in the hallway. What happens to the temperature in the hallway? It goes down. It goes down. It decreased. Very good. So, in exothermic reaction, what we see, because this energy is allowed to go, the exterior gets hot. So this, the temperature increases. Important, write it down. So, temperature increases. In endothermic, because the energy is being locked in, then the temperature decreases. So, here, the temperature increases in exothermic because the energy is allowed to leave. Here, 
the temperature decreases because the energy is locked up. Okay? Yes? Is that like when you burn it on paper? It would be X, X, dormant? Well, not the burning paper, but whenever you, um, like if, it's a, if it's a match, the reaction of the phosphorus to the friction, that yeah. itself is exothermic. Or if it's a lighter, the reaction of the gas to the, the, the flint, okay, that's exothermic. Uh, remember when you did the liver with the hydrogen peroxide and it got hot? That was exothermic. Now, endothermic, I remember that when you did the vinegar and the baking soda got cold, yeah. and also the alpha seltzer and the water got cold, those would be endothermic because they got cold. Okay? So any questions over any of those? Okay, so all these chemical reactions are occurring. You're going to write it down as a chemical equation. Well, when you write down a chemical equation, you have to make sure that it follows the law of conservation of mass. And what the law of conservation of mass says is that energy, I'm sorry, matter cannot be created nor destroyed. You cannot create and you cannot destroy matter at all. You can think you're a magician and make it disappear, but it went somewhere else. You didn't disappear. It's still there somewhere. It's a trickery. But you can't create and you cannot destroy anything. You can only change it, you can move the position, you can change the way it looks. You can't create or destroy anything. Because the law of conservation of matter says that. Okay? And, and to no offense to anyone, okay? Whatever large entity that you believe in, God, Buddha, whatever, God, you're not them. You're not those, that entity. Therefore, you can't create or destroy anything. They can, but you can. Okay? I believe God. So, make sure that you realize that the law of conservation mass says you can't destroy or create anything. And guys, the word tells you, what does concern mean? Concern about someone. No, not concern. 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 <laughs> concern. Like, when you conserve energy, you keep it. Like you keep it. Okay? So, law of conservation of mass. Key being mass. You can't destroy it. You can't create it. Okay? When we're talking about a chemical reaction, the law of conservation of mass says that your products and your reactants have to equal. The mass of your reactants have to equal to the mass of the products. That makes sense. If you're making cookies and you follow the recipe, and the recipe says that you're going to get a dozen cookies, that's what you're going to get. By no miraculous way can you, for some reason, end up with five dozen cookies when the recipe was only for a dozen and you only put a dozen stuff of ingredients, right? Now you can say, oh, but you can make the cookie smaller. It doesn't matter, you still have the same amount of cookie. <laughs> okay? I know you were thinking it. Who said that? Okay? Students have said it over the years. <laughs> That's why. I beat you to the punch. I beat you to the punch, because I know you're going to say it. Okay? So, what you need to realize is, basically, the mass, if you took the mass of all your ingredients that you put in your recipe, and you take the mass of all your cookies, they're going to equal. Because law of conservation of mass says that you can't create or destroy anything. And you can't. Okay? I know. Still there. <laughs> it's another key. I understand, but it's still there. You separate it. If I, if I take the mass of this and the mass of this and add it, it's still the same. Oh, but it won alone. Well, one alone, but you, did you disappear the other one? No. So it's still there. So, um, with law of conservation of mass, you're going to see that your products and your reactants are equal. So, when we look at chemical equations, we look at balance or unbalanced. So if I'm looking at this, these two equations are basically the same equation. They're the equation of hydrogen gas and oxygen gas becoming what? They're both of them are that. But they're different. This is considered a balance equation, and this is not. This is why. Because if I look at what's happening here, I have two molecules of hydrogen gas and one molecule of oxygen giving me two molecules of water. That means that in my reactant side, I have four hydrogens, four atoms of hydrogen, right? And I have two atoms of oxygen. Is that correct on this side? Yes. Remember, we counted atoms. Is that correct? Yes. yes. 
Alright? So if I come over here, and I can make mistakes, always check me. I have two molecules of water, which means I have four, uh, four hydrogens and two oxygens. Is that correct? Now, are my hydrogens on this side equal to the hydrogens on that side? Yes. Are my oxygens on this side equal to my oxygens on that side? Yes. So did I conserve matter? Yes. Yes. I have the same amount, okay, and I have the same type of atoms. Therefore, since the atoms equal on both sides, I know that this equation follows the law of conservation of mass. Since it follows the law of conservation of mass, we call that a balanced equation. This is the correct way to write an equation. This is an incorrect way to write an equation. If I look at this, I have two hydrogens and two oxygens on this side, on the reactive side. On the product side, I have two hydrogens and one oxygen. How in the world did I lose an oxygen? Oh, wait, no. That's impossible. Oh, because there's you, no way. Because you added two. No, you lost the two. Uh, you can't. You added one. Okay. I obviously lost an oxygen here, but just by looking at the numbers. That's impossible. That's never going to happen. Because law of conservation of mass is what everything kind of oh. goes through. Now, what I happened here is I wrote this equation wrong. Because if my mess up, the reaction is not going to mess up. The reaction is going to be the reactive. Okay? So if I write something like this, I just wrote what we call an unbalanced equation, and it is an incorrect equation because the atoms do not equal on both sides. So when we write equations, we have to write them following the law of conservation mass, meaning our left side, our reactants, is equal to our products, which is our right side. Okay? On Tuesday, we're going to learn how to, what we call, balance chemical equations. And we have to balance them because we have to make sure that it follows the law of conservation of mass. Okay? So, any questions about the notes? Okay, that is the end of the notes. You want to go through, make sure that you tape it down if you got a flip page.